this is a sequel of tutorial 4 just a brief recap what you did in that video we learned how to create a port and the mandatory steps to start the simulation this video will deal with the written loss plot found from the simulation and you will also learn how to access and customize the appearance of important simulation results Return loss is closely related to scattering parameter or in short we call it S parameter. These parameters are used to model high frequency and port linear electrical networks. The S parameters are arranged in a matrix form called S matrix or scattering matrix. It contains N squared elements for an end port network. The elements are complex quantities having imaginary and real part. The microstrip patch antenna we designed and simulated has only one port, so the value of n is equal to 1. Therefore, the S matrix for the antenna contains a single element S11. This S11 is also known as reflection coefficient. Again, I wanted to recall that S11 is a complex number and it has magnitude and phase angle. When the magnitude of S11 is expressed in decibel, then it is known as the return loss at the input port. Mathematically, the return loss at the input port is expressed by this equation. Remember, the return loss is always in decibel. Now you know what is the return loss, but the question is, what is the return loss plot? If you take the frequency along the x-axis and the return loss in db along y-axis and plot the corresponding values, then you will get the return loss plot. The return loss plot will provide you some important information. You can determine whether the antenna is a single band or multiband from this plot. You can also calculate the bandwidth of the corresponding frequency bands from the plot. Now let's move to CS environment and check the return loss plot of the patch antenna. The plot can be seen from this folder named 1D results. Expand it and select this folder. This is the return loss plot of the microstrip patch antenna. The frequency is along x axis and the return loss is along y axis. Now, the question is how to tell whether the antenna is single band or multi band. The shape of the curve will tell you this thing. Notice that the return loss value is almost 0 dB in all frequencies except at 1.8 gigahertz. At this frequency, there is a sharp dip, and the dip has crossed minus 10 dB. There is no other sharp dip in the graph, and that means it is a single band antenna. Now, look at this figure. This is a return loss plot for a dual band antenna. The two sharp dips are easily distinguishable. Similarly, there will be multiple sharp dips for a multi band antenna. Now, right click on the plot and select Move Axis Marker to Minimum. It will show you the corresponding return loss value at the resonant frequency. This is the value of the frequency and this is the value of the return loss in dB. You can move the axis marker by clicking and dragging it with the mouse or by pressing the left or right arrow keys from the keyboard. You can also customize the curve style. Right click on the curve and uh, then select the curve style. You can also select the curve color as you like. You can change the line type or line width. Now if you apply it, you will see a completely different style. If you like to mark the points along the curve, select additional marks and then select the marker shape and size as you like. the curve has been marked. To go back to the default settings, just press the default button. You can also add your own comments or annotations in the plot. The settings are pretty straightforward. Just for an example, let me give you an annotation. Here is the annotation. You can also drag it anywhere you like. You can also customize the plot properties. Let's say we want to change the 
0.2 frequency interval in the x-axis into a more abstractive interval like 0.5 so you have to uncheck this auto tick and define it 0.5 here now the x-axis looks much better sometimes you might be interested in plot data in tabular form to get the plot data go to file menu and then export then select plot data it will save the plot data in this text file this is the text file which contains the plot data this is the frequency column and this is the S11 in dB column let's now calculate the bandwidth of the frequency band from the return loss plot this is a return loss plot first of all identify the minus 10 dB line this line intersects the curve in two points these two points will give you the low and high frequency of the band the value of the low frequency comes out to be 1.79 GHz and the high frequency is 1.83 GHz the bandwidth is the difference between these two frequencies which comes up to be 40 MHz it's quite a narrow bandwidth it's also possible to tell whether the antenna is narrow band or wide band by simply looking at the plot without any need of calculation the sharp dip of the curve would cover a wide range of frequency in case of a wide band antenna I hope you have now realized the significance of the return loss plot of an antenna that's all for today Thank you for watching.